Hello everyone, thanks for being here. Today I'll present an integration between the bandage decomposition and the progressive hedging applied to expansion planning models. The idea is to use the bandage decomposition to guarantee convergence and the progressive hedging to improve the convergence rate. Well, every time we talk about expansion planning models, we think about renewables because the investment cost is decreasing and the efficiency is improving. But uh, renewables bring lots of challenges to the power system, such as flexibility, for example. And flexibility uh, 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 is something that the system will require in order to accommodate the variability and the uncertainty of the renewables. Okay, so variability and uncertainty must uh, are two main things that all of the expansion planning models nowadays must be taken into consideration. And variability and uncertainty can make expansion planning models very hard to solve. And that's why we are proposing in this talk a new decomposition algorithm that will make it easier to solve expansion planning models with lots of scenarios. Well, here is the formulation of the, the, the expansion planning models I'm using. It's very uh, straightforward. I, I have one investment decision for all of the scenarios. I have monthly time steps. And for each of the months, I have typical days. This, that can be understood as pictures of a typical day where we are going to take into consideration the hourly variability of the renewables. So we are going to take into consideration hourly constraints and everything that requires hourly resolution. So we are addressing here both the uncertainty and also the hourly variability of the renewables. So we are addressing flexibility. And well, here is the extensive form of the model with lots of all of the constraints. We have load balance, transmission network constraints, we have reservoir constraints and etc. But in order to understand better the structure of the problem, I will make a simplification of this formulation. So let's analyze here the simplification of the, the problem. We, we are minimizing investment costs where X is our investment decision. And we are also minimizing the, ex, uh, the average of the operative costs, where y is the, the, the operative variable. And of course, we have this constraint here with the uncertainty in the right-hand side. And this is the constraint that is coupling the investment decision with the operative decision. Okay, and well, the, the main idea is that this, we are, we, our dream is to solve this problem, but this problem is too hard to be solved without any decomposition. So well, moving forward, uh, I'm going to, to address now the traditional bandage decomposition that is, uh, usual, uh, that is, is, is used a lot to solve this problem. Okay, so well, the idea behind the bandage decomposition is very straightforward. We are going to have a master problem, which is basically a minimization of the investment cost. And we have a slave problem, which is the operative problem, which is basically a minimization of the operative cost for each of the scenarios. And the idea is to solve the operative problem and to send Bender's cut to the master problem in order to achieve convergence. And we can calculate a lower bound, which will be the, the objective function of the master problem. And the upper bound is a feasible solution, which is the, 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 the investment cost plus the true operative cost, the true operative cost, okay? So this is the idea of the, tra the traditional bandage decomposition. What, uh, the first thing I will propose here is an improvement in the bandage decomposition. So instead of simply minimizing investment costs, let's minimize investment costs, but let's take into consideration one specific scenario of the operation. So let's add to the master problem one scenario in this example here, the scenario number one, of the operative scenarios, of the operative problem, which is this, uh, which is this uh, scenario I'm highlighting here. 
And the basic idea is that this master problem will know the exact operative costs for this scenario number one. And that's why we don't need to calculate Bender's cut. We don't need to approximate the operative cost of this scenario through Bender's cut because we are calculating the exact cost, okay? So, well, the, the idea behind this is to, since we are adding constraints to the master problem, it's of course our lower bound will be better because we are going to achieve a, a, a higher lower bound because we are adding constraints to the problem. So this is for sure an improvement of the Bender's decomposition or better, an improvement of the lower bound of the Bender's decomposition. And well, since we are adding the scenario number one, we're not adding all of the other scenarios. So for example, we can copy and paste the master problem and solve as many versions of the master problem as we want. So let's say we have 10 scenarios. We, we want to solve this problem with 10 scenarios. Let, let's make 10 copies of the master problem and solve each one of them. We are going to have 10 different investment solution. And for each one of these investment solution, we can calculate the operative problem. And, and please note that the operative problem are all the same. So since the operative problem are always the same, is always the same, we can share Bender's cuts across the master problem. So we can take one bend, the, the, the Bender's cut from the operative problems to all of the master's problems. At the end of the day, we are going to have 10 valid lower bounds and 10 valid upper bounds because we have 10 scenarios. So the idea is to take the biggest lower bound and the smallest upper bound so that we can have the, 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 be the best convergence of the problem, right? And well, so this is also really straightforward. Now let's add the progressive hedging terms. So the idea, it's very straightforward. We are still having, uh, let's say we have 10 scenarios. We are still having 10 copies of the master problem. And for each one of them, we are going to add the progressive hedging terms, which is basically uh, an augmented Lagrangian relaxation of the non-anticipativity constraints. Okay, so the idea is to add those terms to the, to the master problems, which in other words, are, are basically regularization of the Bender's decomposition, in other words, okay? And, and well, in order to calculate lower bounds now, we must uh, solve a different problems, removing the quadratic terms, okay? And the lower bound will be the average of all of these problems here, so we calculate an average of them. And we are still having 10 valid upper bounds because the, we still have 10 valid feasible solutions with progressive hedging or not. So we are going to take the smallest upper bound or in other words, the best solution so far. And this is our upper bound, okay? So well, the improved bundles decomposition for sure is an improvement because we are adding constraints, our lower bounds are better. But since we, uh, but when we talk about progressive hedging, it's not easy to see that we are indeed having an improvement in the convergence rate. But I'm going to show these results in the case study now. So well, I'm, I'm having here a, 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 an illustrative case, case example with lots of plants, lots of scenarios, and two years horizon, just to, to, to show an example. So we, in other words, we have millions of constraints, millions of variables, we can solve them a reasonable uh, amount of time and with a very good optimality gap, okay? And well, let's take a look at the convergence with and without the progressive, uh, the progressive hedging terms. And well, uh, here in the left-hand side is the convergence graph of the Bender's decomposition alone. The black line is the gap, the gray line is the, the lower bound, and each one of the others line with colors are a valid upper bound, okay? So we have lots of upper bounds because if you have 10 scenarios, you are going to have 10 upper bounds. In this case, we have 100 scenarios, so we're going to have 100 valid upper bounds. And what we can see is that when we consider the progressive hedging terms, the algorithm converge in nine iterations. But when we are with dependence decomposition alone, the exact same problem, we have 
43 iterations in order to achieve convergence. So both, both of the uh, algorithm converts, converge to the same point, to the same value, but with the progressive hedging terms, with the regularization, we have a huge improvement in the convergence rate. And this is the idea behind the algorithm. And this is what I have for today. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. And I will have and I will be very happy to answer all of your questions if you have any. Thank you.